five, I'd like to call to order the Town of Woodstock Board of Village Trustees regular meeting for November 12, 2019. Um, and I'd like to start with uh, any citizen comments that may occur. Hearing none, uh, let's move along to, uh, we don't have any additions and deletions, do we, Beth? Okay. So, uh, no permits tonight, and so we're going to go to our tree warden report, um, which um, covers the areas of sooty mold on trees and the emerald ash borer threat. Don Wheeler. Uh, thank you. Um, the uh, first issue, Frank uh, brought to my attention a couple of weeks ago that uh, homeowner along the green had concerns that their fence was turning all black and uh, assumed it was from a tree problem, which it is. And I've researched what it is, is sooty mold that's produced from honeydew being produced by aphids that um, produces this uh, frass that comes out of the tree and um, attracts dirt and makes the black issue. Um, um, I've uh, contacted a couple tree companies in the area. There's a couple solutions to it. Um, spraying and some pruning. Um, in contacting local tree companies, spraying is not a total option because nobody's really willing, with its proximity to houses and cars and the green and all, um, most of them are not willing to spray any pesticides. Um, in those village limits. So the option is there is a non-toxic um, uh, horticultural dormant oil spray that could be done in the spring, a one-time application, and then the trees could be thinned out and pruned, which would help their overall health and eliminate them being so susceptible to aphid infestation. So, so let me ask a question. How many uh, whole properties are being uh, impacted by this besides that one? Um, there's three. 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 Yeah. It, is there a health so risk? To the, with the city, is the city mold a health risk? No. No, it's not a health risk. It's just appearance. So potentially you could treat the trees that are affecting those three homes right. as a start. Yes. Okay. Those are three that we know of. Mr. Three that we know of. That's the issue. We haven't, we've identified those three. There may be more that we're not aware of, um, but... But shouldn't be that be so we, we have One on one side and two here on the, the green. So would you plan on starting there, Don, in the, with, uh, in the spring? Yeah, that would be um, doing the spray in the spring, and I'm still waiting for estimates. I was supposed to have estimates for this meeting on what that would cost to do the spray. Yeah. And the, the pruning would be... It would be great if you could bring us estimates by next month so we could yeah. include it in the budget. Yeah. Is there some understanding of an approximate of how much that would cost? Um, just the spray itself would be probably under $500. And how much would it cost to power wash those fences? Yeah. Uh, I don't know about that. Those are old fences. Yeah, I don't think that... Uh, I think we could we'll scrub them. Well, yeah. are, is it a health risk to the trees? The city? What's that? Are the trees in jeopardy at all from the city mold? No, it's not a, a no. health threat to the trees. No. They're fine. Um, so in this report, it says, so the risk, I guess, that we're worried about is that these trees will eventually fall over and hurt someone, according um, to the That's on the emerald ash that's board. The that's, the a that's, that's a different subject. That's a different subject. That's what they're killing. But, so we're not worried about the spray drifting to other trees and affecting yeah. those trees, yeah, that the, is a concern. The, uh, if we just do the dormant oil, that is a non-toxic horticultural spray that is not a threat to anybody's health or any other tree's health. Okay. And that would just be done once in the spring. And um, nobody really wants to use a pesticide spray, mm -hmm. so that's not an option out mm -hmm. there, I don't believe. And But I think uh, the uh, horticultural spray and thinning, pruning the trees are going to pretty much eliminate the problem. Great. So if everyone on this board is in agreement, let's uh, see what the, the cost would be to treat those trees for those three affected homes that we are aware of. 
in the, with the dormant oil. All right, and uh, go from there. All right, and now let's move on to uh, the bigger threat, uh, Emerald Ash Borer. Right, um, as uh, you probably saw in the standard last week, Heartland is addressing the Emerald Ash Borer and um, other towns. We are lucky and haven't had an infestation in Woodstock yet, but there's a lot of towns really nearby. The closest lately is Londonderry, Vermont, and there's uh, <coughs> infestations in Orange County and Addison County, and um, it's uh, kind of the uh, the timing is um, unsure. Nobody really knows how fast it spreads, but it's fairly fast. So we could have it here this summer sometime. We could have it uh, in a couple of years, or it could be 10 years before it really bothers Woodstock, but we need a plan in place to deal with it and how we're going to uh, deal with the trees once there is an infestation here. And um, there's other towns, um, I don't know if you have copies, Middlebury has yeah. a very comprehensive plan yeah, and other do. towns are coming up with plans that um, we can work off of. And I'm. Uh, Attending meetings with a committee um, has been formed in Ludlow through the Ludlow Town Warden that um, is coming up with a plan and I'm attending those meetings on a regular basis to learn and figure out the best route that we can use in this town. So at this time, would you say that uh, the information you're gathering, which you have gathered, you could come to us with a potential plan uh, of action for, for the village and the town? Um, yes. Yep. That, that is the main goal, is to come up with a comprehensive plan. And um, from what I've seen so far, the first um, uh, task to approach on any plan is to get an inventory of the trees in the town and see how many trees we have or how many hazard trees and um, what it would cost to deal with those trees. And it would be the trees in the right of way that everybody's concerned with within We're 25 feet of the Visit center. municipalities, yes. And uh, everyone has probably noticed on their uh, electric bills that Green Mountain Power is now charging um, a fee uh, for emerald ash borer because they will be, I guess it's a sinking fund, yeah, they'll, be, they'll be removing trees that are threats to power, specifically to pa their power lines. They're coming up with their own plan and yeah. any uh, hazard tree, any ash tree that's leaning toward power lines or houses or anything, it's uh, considered proactive and a good idea just to remove them now because uh, once they become infected, the uh, the beetle weakens the tree and it's not safe to climb or to prune or to uh, remove. So removal costs are going to increase when the tree becomes unhealthy and infected. Yeah. It's a terrible thing. I have a question. Yes. I think that I have come across this before in another state where, mm -hmm. we, where we used to live. Mm -hmm. Is this the same one that it'll kill the tree in less than a year? Um, well, it all depends on the tree. It can. It can be very devastating and kill a tree in a year, but it's normally um, two or three or four years down the road before it really dies and before it becomes a safety hazard. Yeah, we had this happen on our property out of state and um, before we moved here, and um, it was shocking how fast yeah. it happened. It was what, what state is that? Massachusetts. Oh, so yeah. far away. Yeah. Yeah, but it fell. I, yeah. I just was really shocked. It was a beautiful tree, and then the next spring it just didn't bloom. It was a beautiful tree the year before, so mm -hmm. I, yeah. I just was curious. Well, that's definitely something we're going to have to deal with, unfortunately. And there's a lot of ash trees in Woodstock on private property that threaten things as well as the public. We had the same thing. I lived in Illinois for many years, and we had the same thing. All the ash trees had to be removed. All of them. They were coming through our properties and removing, it, removing them all. It's becoming something similar to what Dutch Elm was several years ago. Yeah, it sounds like the Elm Pretty much wiped out. That's awful. Thank you for sharing your experiences. So, so Don, we'll, we'll look for you to gather the information you're doing. Thank yep. you. And, and bring it back to our boards. 
I just want to publicly thank Don for the work he's doing. Yes. Uh, he responded quickly to my issues with the dark stuff, and uh, he does a great job for you. You should really appreciate it. We do. And we do. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. All right, moving on to <coughs> our police chief's report. Chief Blish. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, before I get into those other two agenda items that I had put on there, I'll just give you the overall rundown. The Veterans Parade went well. Uh, turkey trot's coming up on us uh, for Thanksgiving. So just keep that in mind when you're on your way to dinner. In the, it's earlier in the morning, of course, but if you have to travel, just keep that traffic in mind. Um, we're also going to be participating in the Governor's Highway Safety uh, Thanksgiving uh, High Visibility Enforcement Mobilization. It's going to be from November 27th to December 1st, so we'll have additional patrols on during that time period. Uh, and hand in hand with that is in October we had uh, six crashes and two DUIs. So I just ask everyone to, to drive carefully and cautiously. Halloween went well. I think the weather kind of, even though it was poor weather, it helped keep things, uh, keep a lid on things. And it, it did wrap things up a little bit earlier probably than otherwise would have happened. Uh, did you notice, uh, were there any problems um, on uh, We had no problems. Street? No problems that I know of. I, I heard just coincidentally not being there that uh, it was quite cleaned up. Right. Yeah, that it was, uh, yeah, it went very well in yep. terms of... Uh, he he trick-or-treated. The only sadness is he doesn't come in costume. <laughs> I think he's in costume. I was waiting for The costume. weather definitely limited the amount of people that actually showed up from out of town, so it was... It was pretty miserable. It was quiet. We had a range, actually. Allison Clarkson, uh, of Gulf oh, Avenue. Yeah. We had, even on our hill, we had about 600 kids, and uh, it was great, as always, but we had kids as far, you know, they come from Braintree, Springfield. We had two flash mobs, which was really fabulous, which is one of the pluses of our neighborhood being closed down, is that there's, it's safe to do fun things, like a flash mob, and Allison Johansson had hers, and this, a, a group of Springfield dancers did another one. We had a radio broadcast, which was a little over the top. Uh, but, you know, it went very well, I, I think. It always does. I mean, we love it. And I understand there's some that would, we had a conversation about trick-or-treating and closing off High Street and Gulf Avenue and Maple Street a couple of years ago. And um, I think we, it's maybe time to have that again, because I understand there's some concerns again. But I think it's really one of the festive, fabulous things we do. And uh, those of us who do it really love it. Yes. I'd like to say that I think that's really nice, but it makes it no fun for everybody else in town that would like trick-or-treaters. Like, I'd love to have them. <laughs> and shutting down just part, you know, part of that for everybody to go to just part of town kind of takes away the experience for everybody else. It does create an extremely safe zone, though. Yes, and, and I'm so Instead of walking across Route 4 that has trucks going back and forth, I, uh, it, no, it's, it, it's just... I don't really... It's, you know, I, it's interesting. I'm not opposing it, I'm just only saying, like, I, uh, you guys my, don't want to do it, we're happy to have it again, so. <laughs> I, I just said, back, back up to what you said, just personally, my three grown children yeah. still comment on how when Halloween comes around, the memories are so pleasant and wonderful about High Street and, and the crowds, the fact that it is crowded instead of a dispersed situation. And... Um, there's a lot of people who feel that way, and I understand some people feel otherwise. But. Yeah. And, and we welcome anyone who would like to experience Halloween who lives in town, come and join us. We'd love to have you. And on that note, the, the residents were pretty happy with the candy uh, this year. I think we had a lot of donations. Yes. And, uh, it was great. Yeah. Yeah. With, the, with the town and, and village uh, donated, we were able to make use of those funds pretty and, uh, and I think the dentists are profiting as well. From this <laughs> Somebody was handing out toothbrushes. Uh, she counted 140 toothbrushes. <laughs> wow. Uh, Dr. Knott donates those, but that could be wrong. Uh, signs, the signs are up. Uh, no through trucks are up on, on River Street, which we talked about last yes. month. I got approval from the Rotary Club to tie into their uh, power meter off of their pole, which saves us a lot of money by by doing that. Now I'm just going to follow up with the power company to make sure we're good putting it on that pole, but I think uh, 
relatively soon we should have the electronic speed sign that I purchased with grant funds for River Street up and running um, sometime, hopefully in December. Great, the River Street folks will be yep. pleased. I think so too. Um, and then last but not least, um, on the 23rd, or excuse me, the 22nd of November, that's a Friday, at um, from 7 to 9 or 10, depending on how well we're doing, I'm hoping, uh, having a uh, Stuff the Cruiser food donations, for, uh, Coffee with the Chief event will be at the Emergency Services Building. I'll advertise it, of course. And hopefully all, we can stuff our cruiser with food donations and that will all go to the food shelf. That's a great idea. Thank you. That's nice. And the food shelf. At the Emergency Services Building. At the Emergency Services Building. Um, oh, <clears throat> so now meters. Uh, just so you have a, a quick rundown of, of meters. Um, in 2000, uh, excuse me, this last month we had $17,846 in meter revenue. Uh, in 2018, uh, same time this year, or that year, there was $15,412 in meter revenue. So we had an uptick, a fairly decent uptick in, in meter revenue. Which kind of brings me to uh, the agenda item that I put on there. Uh, one of the things I put on there was that we're... The meters we have now, as you know, were sort of a lease deal. They were refurbished. They were given to us a couple of years ago, 2017. Um, they're, I think, ending, coming close to their life cycle. They're not supporting them anymore in terms of, of making parts for them. Um, we seem to be experiencing a higher level of failure. So I think we should look forward to either replacing them, upgrading them with the Mark V meters, uh, which is their newest generation meter, which would just be a, a quick swap out of what exists now. Or, you know, the other altern alternative could be kiosks. Um, but I didn't want to do anything without, I wasn't going to put a lot of effort into one way or the other, unless I kind of got a feel for, for what you folks would like to do. Chief, so when we did this about two and a half years ago, the Mark V was the new one, and we went for the three, I believe which didn't have all the options of the five. Is there, is the five going to be the same obsolete thing? Like, is there now a seven? Yeah, I'm not sure. That, I'll write that, I'm going to, like I said in my, my message, I'll probably have more questions of course. Than, than what, what I have answered for. What year did we put the current ones in? 17. It was just 17? For only two years. Really? 27 to old. So we have like uh, about 156 meters. 166 meters. 166 meters. Okay, a little bit more than I thought. They're, the Mark Fives are right now about $500 a piece to replace. They could they could be phased in. The kiosks are like around $6,500 installed. Um, the quite the big question is how many can we get get away with? How many would we need? And you, you yes, estimated about 13? 12 to 13, right? No. Which so the, the, it's actually it's kind of an even number when you, when you do the math. How does someone uh, there's a kiosk on the street, okay, and then there's parking spaces down here. How does someone down here pulls in know that they're meant to walk up back yeah. up to here and and that's a great point. I'm not sh part of the issue. Of go part of the the desire of going to the kiosk, I suppose, would be to get rid of a lot of those. Poles, right? right, to to facilitate snow removal, but also aesthetically um, a little bit better. Yes. But your point is a valid one because we were talking, obviously talking about this, and, and that would be one of the issues is we wouldn't necessarily be getting rid of all of those poles because you have to have signage in place telling people, hey, go pay the meter uh, kiosk. Um, so you probably have to keep some of those poles. You almost would have to keep all, every single one of them. Isn't no. It? Well, if you pull into a space that says nothing, how do you know no, I mean, that you're a good supposed point. to go right. to well, a kiosk? Two, if you pull into a two-hour parking, you look down. Do you when find people it? look, I mean, we're not, we're not like, like totally blinders. Your particular parking spot. I, th I think what my suggestion is we should, I hate to form another committee, but we should form it up to you, but put some get together another committee so that we can have more points of view, more thoughts about what's going on, uh, and then kind of maybe make a decision based on, on some of that information. Do we know what our annual That's net fine. revenue is from parking meters? 
it's in the town report, but I think last year I think it was uh, was it over 150 or close to 150? The net. Or is it 105? I thought it was 80 something was the net. Uh, 87. Are you talking about after you take away costs for right. and all that? Right. I thought it was oh, like 87,000 yeah. or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For uh, for the meter. Yeah. Okay. It's not like kiosks are a new sure. concept either. It's in the no. plus. They're everywhere. Um, the purpose of it was never to make money. The purpose of it Just was to, turn to keep the turnover in parking spaces in the village. And that, we should never lose sight of that. I agree. Yes. Jeff, Jeff. I'd love to, another viewpoint, I'd love to um, get rid of the flashing lights. And so kiosks could achieve that. So... Uh, Okay. The, the other, the other, um, the well, I indicated in there the factor is with the kiosks is you can, you'll double up on, on space revenue because somebody will pull away, somebody will pull in, not know that the space has already been paid for and pay. Yeah. I think uh, your, your, your suggestion of forming a committee is, is a good one. We had actually, we had a good uh, argument we, we committee did, yeah. uh, that did work that led to us getting those meters, but um, we could do that. I just, I just felt that, you know, I wanted to bring it to you because I know we're experiencing a little bit more of a higher failure rate because these current uh, meters are, are aging. Um, and then before we decide, hey, let's just, let's just replace them with a the newer version, let's maybe look at some of our other, other options, that's all. Maybe I'm missing it. Do the kiosks have some sort of, um, like, maintenance plan that that insures them for more than two years? I'm, I don't know. I'm sure if we buy them new, they, they should probably come with some sort of warranty, guys. So. Sally, yeah, actually. Right. Just a comment. Oh, yeah, Sally. And that's on the kiosks. You don't actually double up because if you go to a kiosk and it already has money in your space, or do you, you going to use the No, that's not true. You have a ticket, you stick that in your window, and when you drive away, that ticket goes with you. The version that Rob oh, was talking about here is tied to your license plate. Yeah, not you would just put your stuff. tag in, you don't even get a ticket. To put on your windshield, you put your license plate in, and, you, and you're on your way. That means people have another license plate. Now. Yeah, who remembers it? <laughs> Some of us do. I, I used one in Massachusetts, and, and I had to send my daughter back to look at. I had to take a picture of my license plate <laughs> so I knew what it was. But I mean, once people, once local folks get used to it, you know. Yeah, the locals will get used to it. <laughs> Allison, we get used to everything. Um, I I just like to say I'd also. Having experienced the kiosks in Hanover, so if anyone hasn't, they go to Hanover and you can experience a kiosk and what it's like. Um, I, I would say that if we're trying to make it convenient for visitors, walking further to do it, and then it means two walks in a very cold weather. Uh, I, I, I would just say that I, I, it, it's, it's got pluses and minuses a kiosk. Yep. Yep. And um, I think the, you know there are a couple minuses. One is you're people aren't as clear about uh, that they actually have to pay. Uh, you know, I had to get a ticket in Hanover before I realized, oh, this isn't free now. I have to go and get this damn kiosk. Um, so I, I, I think there is some consumer confusion with kiosks, and the other is I just think it's not as convenient for our visitors. Okay. Yep, go. Cool. Soon maybe we'll be able to just go to an app on our telephones and we won't have to have anything on the street. Where I, I grew up, they have those now that you pull up and you go onto an app, and I think I still have the goofy thing on my phone, but I think either way is is fine. But I actually think it would anything would look better than the meter poles. Well, and better yet, people might not be driving. <laughs> might be doing something else. All right, we're getting a little too far in the future. <laughs> uh, yes. I think it would be nice, nicer for people in the winter time to come in and not have the big mounds of snow to crawl over, because I find that I'll avoid town. <laughs> and it's like that. Well, we, so your business um, might go up. <laughs> we, uh, we're aware of that. Yeah. And, and those mounds are, are bad. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think that's something to, I, I urge you to go to the select board or speak to the person to your left and um, <laughs> say that that's a problem that needs to be addressed by the town crew uh, in a way that hasn't been. One, way, one thing that has been suggested is to, uh, have one of those small plows that can go down the sidewalk and get the, get the snow into the street um, uh, in a way that's easier than how we're currently doing with a back, with a, a front end loader, and pulling it off the sidewalk and causing damage. And then it's easier to get it out of the street um, 
uh, by the road crew. But then, uh, but right now, having the piles yeah, it's is dangerous. really I bad. I see people fall, and you know, it's, I think that's it's, a it, it, it is a bad problem. And uh, yeah. And One other issue that I, I put on here, um, there may be fewer modem charges with, with the kiosk versus the, the individual meters. Each individual meter has its own modem. Each individual meter has its each as an individual modem cost each month that we pay to the the, uh, the meter company. I don't know, but I suspect if we're only paying for one modem per kiosk, that would be a reduction in overall costs of the parking program. Is there, is there uh, a trustee who's sitting here right now who would like to form a committee? Um, I, I was on uh, the last one, so I'd, I'd love for someone else to do this one. You were on the last committee when we did the parking meters? Yes. Was I on it with you? Uh, it was, it was myself, it. Nick Farrow, uh, yeah. Sam Siegel. Me uh, and, um, and Barry, wasn't he? Yeah. And that, and that committee was to form, there was to decide whether or not to go to like a credit card version or something, right? Yeah, and Barry's the one that brought to our attention about Barry. Um, I think Anna wanted to be on it. Oh, maybe Anna. Okay, we will, we, I like your idea. Let's wait, that's, the person who's not here should share this. Because that's, I think, that's how wait. democracy oh, works. So, <laughs> we'll ask Anna if she has an interest. I think we should form a committee. And, and, uh, yeah, I, I and, think and to at least come back so that yes. we can make a more informed decision. Yeah, but I, I just needed to get the conversation started, so. With yeah, Anna? So I wasn't making that unilateral decision. You were decision. welcome to be on the committee. Yeah. So it's you and Anna so far. Um, okay. Better. Better for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chief. What else? Uh, the other issue Is was school resource. School resource officers. As I indicated um, in my little note, my memo, the uh, the school the uh, school district has approached me on a couple different occasions to ask to inquire about implementing an SRO program. At this point, they say they have some money that they can put forward towards it. Um, part of it would probably you know, involve getting uh, some grant. There is a, a COPS grant out there offered through the Bureau of Justice Assistance, which in essence pays for a police officer for three years on a grant. The hitch is the municipality is on the hook for the following three years after that for that officer. Um, Again, I, I bring it up because it was brought to me, and I, and I want to start the conversation with you. It may involve even the um, the select board as well, since the high school and middle school are in the town. Well, not only that, but uh, doesn't it potentially uh, involve other towns as well? It does, that's and that's where the, that's why the district's half would come in. Essentially, what they're offering is, is probably around half. Or, or a little bit better than half of what the cost of an officer would be. So they're saying uh, the district wants to cover half and they want Woodstock to cover the other half? That's the quasi, that's sort it's of... Just like the Act 60 thing? The quasi proposal. Wait, yeah. it would cost more than $50,000 for this a year? That's that's just the school side. Right, but I'm saying that it, it would cost more than $50,000 for Monday through Friday for that position. It would cost probably well. It would be with with benefits and everything like that. That would it would be the cost of what a, a, a typical police officer is. Yeah. So it would be more than than that. But that's what the school is offering for half or towards the program. So Fifty thousand dollars. So we're talking about a hundred thousand dollars. Right. But I'm surprised it would cost a hundred thousand dollars. It, it may cost less than that. Right. But that's what they're offering. That's what they they're coming up with some. I don't want to, I'm not speaking out of school because this is what they told me um, and I told them that I would have to bring it to you. Um, they, are, they have a, a position vacancy I think that they're looking to turn into an SRO. So we, you would have to, if this worked out, you would have to hire another officer. Correct. Not, and and there, could, there wouldn't be this a change is not without um, purpose, trust me, I know, because I'm having trouble find, finding, hiring uh, finding a full-time officer vacancy. as it is. Right? I would have yeah. to go out and find another officer, but before I went down the road of seeking grants and whatever else. I wanted to I wanted to bounce it off of you so that I'm not doing a lot of legwork and not for, for not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well uh, right now we don't I don't I don't know what you're looking for from us other so, than uh, other than I support the idea that 
Uh, I don't know the rest of the board that um, in, in this day and age, um, it seems like a good idea. I and, guess what, and, what I was just but, looking for you, Jeff, was just sort of uh, we support the idea, exactly what you said. Support the idea so that when I when I do some more legwork, I'll know that I have your support. That's all. Yeah, the school board thinks it's if, something. Yeah, if they think it's something they need, I, uh, you know. I support the concept. I don't know. That's not carte blanche because I don't know how it would affect sure. the citizens at, uh, in terms of expense. Right. Um, yeah. But and, and I don't know when we would get there. They'd like to start as early as January. I, have frankly. they? Have they? Was there? Did they have any conversation that you're aware of of hiring a retired police officer to do this um, as opposed to going through your department? Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know, know if they have or not. I know of other schools that have uh, uh, exactly what they call them, a school resource officer mm -hmm. who's trained, but is a retired police officer and uh, is hired to do a lot of what this covers. Um, without... they, they may go that way, or I mean, if they, here, here's the rub, if, if they go that way, who is he working for? Is he the school district. He's working at school yeah, district. So if something happens in the school district, who are they going to call? They're going to call us. And, 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 <laughs> and I'm going to have no control over who's who's out there. But if right, but if even if you had an officer out there and something happened that required assistance beyond that one person. Oh no, no question. But I'm saying is from a day to day anyone? from a day to day aspect, if they have a student out of control or if they have a theft complaint or whatever, we're still going to get the phone call. If if that person that's out there at that school is not affiliated with the Woodstock Police Department. I asked this, this just happened this week, and I asked this uh, officer who just, uh, this is his first year being a school resource officer, resource officer, and um, he's formerly a, a, a full-time police officer. And I asked him, what was the major thing that he ended up doing? And he said, uh, kids, kids cutting class and vaping in the bathrooms. And uh, of course, he's there also in case of more something more serious happening, which hopefully you never have to experience a uh, threat to the school. But um, that's what was mostly happening. So when I was in Fort Lauderdale, you, I was in charge of the school resource officer program in Fort Lauderdale. We had eight of them. We had a very defined contract with the county in terms of what the officer was to do and not to do. So anything that involved administrative issues, student discipline issues that was not criminal related, the school would handle. I mean, obviously the officer could be there in a supportive role, but that was not the officer's duty primarily. Was not to say that he wouldn't bring them to the school administration in order to let them do their thing, but he's not going to be administering school. Right, no, this guy didn't either, he, but he right. would bring them to okay. the school. So the same, same thing then. Yeah, and so there, you know, there's a lot of other pluses for the SROs. I mean, your basic school hardening when you talk about, um, you know, target hardening for active killers or whatnot is a, a school resource officer. Plus, he can do, um, you know, other types of training that what you might consider dare. But there's a lot of other programs out there. Not not dare necessarily. That's sort of gone by the wayside. But there's a lot of other programs that he can instruct. He's also there that he could, it's a better bond between, or between students and police, get them used to each other, or get the students used to interacting with police officers, so that's kind of a positive thing. Um, so truancy, there's all kinds of different things that would go along with a school resource officer. I'm not, I don't think he's, that officer just chasing vapors out of the bathroom all day. He's probably uh, no, doing a lot more than that. He's doing, he's doing other things. I, I yeah. just said, well, what sort of things yeah. are dr dramatically? Yeah. What, what he, what's really, and he said, you know, kids who... Keeping say, drugs off the campus, I, I think is a, is a but, big uh, thing. But, but one, I still go back to what uh, made sense to me was hearing that this is a, someone that doesn't have to, who has that experience and can do that job, does not have to be part of our police department, though. And that it might... I, I agree, except that if something happens, we have the jurisdiction and they're going to be calling us anyways. If it's a criminal offense, which, you're so one, they which one of our officers <laughs> would have to do anyway? Do you think it should be some sort of security guard? Or? I think there's more ways. Uh, again, I'm not saying this it has to be this way. I'm, I just brought it up to you to start the conversation. I mean, there could be, we could hire somebody 
as an SRO who would only work during the school year. And then after that, he wouldn't work at all. During the summer, he'd be off. And that would cut, that would cut costs. If we found the right person, I mean, in finding the right person, whether they're a full-time officer or a part-time officer, having, being the right fit for that particular assignment is, is gonna be key as well. Yeah. So, yeah, so when I say I support this, I support the idea of a school resource officer, and I'm only speaking for myself, there's four of us here. I don't necessarily think it has to be a member of our police department, is what I'm saying. I agree that I think that it, go, having community, open lines of communication with our police department is huge, but the school should be handling this, I think, as a board by themselves. I mean, they, you, maybe they want you to be on the committee that interviews the person to see that they fit the right mold for that. But, I mean, you guys have enough going on that I don't think that you need to be worrying about the officer that's working on the campus also. Well, we respond out there anyways. You know, I, mean, I think I put it in here. Maybe I didn't. But in the last two years, we responded out to high school 109 times, which over a two-year period is not... It's not horrible, right? but I'm saying there is, we do respond out there a fair amount of time. And not all of it was for crimes or, other thing, or anything like that. Some of it was a crash in the parking lot or something you know, along those lines. But um, I think overall, we're, if part of the, it's not just a matter of worrying about the officer responding or taking care of things out there. I think there's an overall package to look at in terms of what are the benefits of a school resource officer. But perhaps that, maybe that 109 is. times wouldn't happen if there was somebody on the campus actually dealing with the small things that you shouldn't be wasting your time getting called out for. Right. Well, I, I think that whether or not we personally think this might be appropriate, I see what the school board is requesting, and the position goal is a career law enforcement officer with sworn authority deployed in community-oriented community policing, blah, blah, blah. It seems like they've put a good deal of thought into this, and it must have some reasons for requesting such so yeah. I think that and they were, they we were, have opinions we should listen to the school board right the part where, where we come in on carry is that uh, they're requesting it be a member of our police department right and I think that's, we need to know why they and that we that come up with funds oh well, yeah I would not to know um, the answer that so I'd like to know why they want that specifically because uh, they and can they come up with a police officer and that Robbie you Oh, sorry, Chief, you think that grants are available for at least the first three years for... There's a good, there, are, there are grants out there. I'm not sure when the next grant period, if it's still open now, or if it's closed, or if it, when it opens again. Uh, but I'll explore that if, if you think it's worth exploring. That's what we need. When I lived in Freeport and worked for a social service agency there, um, Freeport um, implemented a a uh, school resource officer. And there were <coughs> discussions galore before that. But I will say that he was a community liaison with the school. And, you know, he worked for the Freeport Police, but he also worked with community groups to, you know, the school board, the, the social service people around, the housing, because things that happen at school sometimes stem from homes, um, and it, it was, you know, and I, I was skeptical, but it was such a val he was valuable, and he's um, valuable piece of the part of the, the community. I think the concept of a, of a school resource officer could absolutely be valuable. And I don't think any of us would disagree with that. No. no. And unfortunately, I think that, you know, because I work with someone who's connected, her husband's connected with the school. I think, I think you'd be surprised. Unfortunately. Yes. Um, just real quick, I know Windsor uh, Police Department has an SRO, and they're in, he goes to three different schools. He works in Windsor, West Windsor, and now in Heartland. And um, so I know the chief there knows about that um, grant program, and he could probably be a really good resource for you on that, and just how it all works within his police department and everything. It's a fairly new position there, but I think they've been doing it for like a year or so, so they might have some good data, and it's local data. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of departments throughout the state that have school resource officer programs, so I'd definitely be relying on you know the Chiefs Association to help me out with that. It's worth, it's worth, it's worth looking into. Okay, I'll do that, and I'll come back to you as soon as I can. Thank you. Chief. That's thank all you. I have. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very thank much. You, thank you, Chief.
Next up is a uh, financial report. And uh, you have if there's questions. Yeah. Frank, do you have anything that, you know, you know, there's a couple things you and I went over. Do you have anything you'd like to point out to the board uh, in particular? Um, I know that uh, the treasurer business is one you might like to point out. The what? The treasurer, the business with the treasurer. You might oh. like to point that out to the rest of the board. That was one of my questions. Oh, okay. That's, uh, in other words, we had been yeah. paying the, you know, the village treasurer uh, at, a, at a mistaken rate, and we corrected that. That looks a little out of whack. Uh, it'll come into focus at the end of the year, uh, exactly on the budget. We were paying too high or too low? We were paying too much. And it wasn't, that person didn't mention that they were being overpaid? Uh, I don't think anybody realized it until I was going carefully through payroll a week or two ago and realized it. Are they responsible for returning the funds, or they're no. going to be docked moving forward? That's what I said. Yeah. Okay. So we're just going to reduce the. Thank you. What, 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 yeah. Thank you for noticing that. Yeah, okay. Carrie. It, it, you know, if you look at the percentages, it's just uh, we're about we should be about a third through. We're not talking about a lot of money. Uh, yes, yeah, it's a third through, and it stuck out that that's fifty percent. No, it's great. A year, and so that'll be equalized going forward. You know, it's good that we have somebody looking out for this stuff. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I have asked Frank to look into the uh, where it shows up the amount that the village gets from the Rockefeller uh, endowment fund. That I'm just not seeing, um, and I'd like to have that show up. The town gets a large uh, piece each year for tax deferment, and the village gets a small piece as well, and uh, that just needs to get accounted for somewhere, make sure that it came in. And Frank's going to identify. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone have, have any other questions? I Rita? do. Second page, building maintenance. What exactly is that six grand? Is that just, it's like the village building maintenance? Uh, sure. What is it? Well, she's talking about six thousand three hundred forty-five dollars and twenty-eight cents. Sixty-five percent of the budget, even though we're only, you know, one third through the budget yeah. a year. It's a good question. What village building do we have? It's, it's the police. It's the ESB. It's the police part of that in the village budget. I think you'll find that it's um, the building plans. Some of them have been oh, put under there. Oh, oh okay. the new the new yeah. EMS the building plans, okay. which incorporate which are partly for our police department, and that's what we're going to the budget. That's your yeah. guess, Beth. I, I could we it, could we confirm that? I can confirm I that. Thank I think you. That's right. Okay. Building plans. Okay. Any other questions on the, the budget um, figures? Uh, hearing none, let's move on. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, okay. Next up, um, uh, old business. Uh, is there any uh, old business to be had? There's none on our agenda. So um, I'll move on to new business, which is short-term rental ordinance uh, discussion and potential adoption. Uh, I'd be uh, open to starting with a, a motion and then discussion. I move we adopt as submitted. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. So what, what does that mean? Like, I, I just don't understand all those terms. Okay, what it means is that the ordinance that we've made available to everyone that we were discussing earlier is a motion to approve it. And and that's what's on the table. Okay. So we'll be working with that? Yes. Oh, no. This well, one. Well, you won't, because you're in the, you're the not village. village. The village. The well, village. I mean, like, when you said the village and the town, like, there's still limits to the town. Right, but this doesn't This have does not address the, 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 yeah, your the situation village. in South Woodstock, uh -huh. Bridget. I know. Yeah, okay. But I'm with them, too. Like, I support everyone. Yes, no, yeah. that's that's fine. This is just going to address, though, the, the short-term in the confines in, of the village, in the only. one square yeah. mile of the village of yeah. Woodstock. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, so um, is there, uh, having gained uh, the, you know, the public input, I just want to say for myself that I think well, all the work uh, uh, that this committee has put in on it, and, and uh, as well as uh, uh, opinions from um, Michael Brands, opinions from David Green, and uh, a work of uh, Joe McLean, uh, the lawyer, I find that uh, this is worth starting out with um, and, and seeing, as we discussed earlier, in a year if we need to make changes based on some of the comments, be aware of those issues, that uh, I'm all for approving this um, uh, and seeing how, how, how well we can make this work. I have one teensy weensy added suggestion. It's not to like the, the spirit, it's just like a use of term to describe a specific person. So section three, Letter C, instead of us saying act on his, her, or its behalf, we just say act on owner's behalf. Is there a reason why we... Oh, wait a minute. I'm trying to find it. Section... Oh, it's on number three. Section three, letter C. That's the second page. Um, oh, second. No, by the owner to act on owner's behalf. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's just what? odd. This copy is missing. There. So she's talking about right here, which is owner to act on their behalf. Or their, yeah. There's just no reason to have all of that, she's saying. Yeah, it just seems just, a little uh, just, uh, extraneous. Oh, is that uh, legal language? Yeah. It's, it's just it's creating like the whole basis. Uh, like, yeah, where someone says, I refer to myself as a It's the same, thing, it's the same thing as you, but, uh, got you. I think it's horrible to call the person it. An agenda-neutral term is the there. So what if it's a corporation? There. There applies to them. Gender neutral. The corporation. There. So there. I think it's broken down into more words than it is, but a lawyer did it, so I'm assuming he's doing it for a reason. Um, how about if we uh, consider amending it as proposed, as proposed. pending yes. a lawyer pointing out a reason why we should not have done so? Okay. Looks yes. fine. How would that be? That's great. Okay. I so what were your words exactly? I was, instead of saying his, her, or its, just on, there. on owners on or owners on there. On, on owners, there. On owners' behalf. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then, uh, does everyone agree with that uh, amendment? By the owner change? to so act on the owner. Would you change your motion? Uh, uh, I, I move to... Um, to accept as presented with the one amendment pending legal review. Second. Um, I also, oh, sorry. you know, in the as we move forward, I'm interested in seeing, um, you know, how this shakes out in terms of multi-unit buildings, uh, multiple STRs per owner. Um, I'm also interested in seeing, you know, if it does make sense to to contract with a commercial enforcement body. Um, those are the things that I was really hearing from the audience, and I. You know, want to make sure we have our eyes on them as we as we go forward, not yeah. necessarily waiting a year if we see that right. that that if, something if, needs to be if done. Evidence comes up before then. That, yeah, I agree with that. And I definitely encourage if if you find that what you're charging is a normal rate, and you can show what you're bringing in is not sufficing, show us the data that says that. Look at what they're charging us now compared to three, four years ago. And we, we can't survive on this. Perhaps we could find a way to make, to extend longer, prefer for law-abiding citizens to, to extend those times. Where it, it is a living, breathing ordinance. It can be altered. All right. Thank yes, Joe. Um, I wondered if you wanted to follow up Dave's point about uh, 6C that the property manager be located within a 30 minute drive and then on the next one we say available and authorized to respond promptly. Did you want to make that more precise or see if prompt works? Like with barriers. Mm -hmm. Somebody said the barriers. Dave Dix. Oh yeah, that, that, that they need to be within a certain, uh, or respond within time. 48 hours. No. 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 no, 45 minutes. minutes. I'm, 45 I'm asking minutes. you. Oh. No, I mean, if somebody's, uh, there might be some instance where you want them to turn up within the hour. Um, I would have no objection to including within the hour. At least respond. Uh, 
I don't know. We're not going to know until we know what kind of issues. Yeah, we don't know what the issue is. Right. But uh, you know, 30 minutes and, and, and add within so the hour. If, if prompt means 48 hours to you, and prompt means two hours to me. Where do we say prompt? Disagreement. Uh, C six C two. Within 30 minutes. So the pages within 30 minutes drive. And then if they respond within 30 minutes to incidents, just to make it coherent and consistent. Here, I just have a question. Yeah. To respond promptly. We'll be carrying stuff promptly within 30 minutes. What happens if somebody's in London? That's the name of the one. Yeah. Within an hour. Up into, yeah, yeah, that's time. feasible. Uh, as well. Mm -hmm. I would think what about I within an hour? Well, I, I like within an hour because... Okay. What if they're on the potty? Okay, well, within well, an hour. What if what is it? We don't what? know what's going on in their life. But, but to respond promptly... Who's going to monitor the timing? What's that? Who's going to monitor the timing? Who's going to monitor the timing? Well, the time well, is reported. Well, we have testimony from guests saying, uh, you know, we... Well, if there's a problem and the police have been notified, and, and let's say, or David, and, and if okay. the person is called... Let me just finish. The person is called and saying, there's an incident here. You need to handle it with your, your unoccupied short-term rental. Um, she, she has a very good example that will help you. I, I was just going to clarify that it, the ambi there's am it's ambiguous, 30 minutes away. His point is, so what if you live 30 minutes away? How quickly will, will can a resident expect to get help for a call? Like, say you have frozen pipes or... Can't, can't find in. the key, you can't get in as a typical need um, to the building, to the residents. Um, so the, I think the intent of that wording, and his, he's just saying it could be interpreted differently. I think the intent is promptly. So realistically, a 30-minute drive in our area is acceptable. Like, you can be in Hanover and get here. Right. That's the... Assu these are making assumptions, and I think he's just pointing out that there's a wide gap in interpretation potential. And oh. just because you're in Hanover doesn't mean you have two days to fix the problem. Right. He just wants a tighter wording. So that the, the point is that it'd be almost the next best thing to the resident owner being in residence. Mm -hmm. This is what right. the goal is. So in that rather wording. than it just saying 30 minute drive, to support that with a time limitation as well, is what I'm mostly hearing. So you're doing a geographic expectation plus a prompt, a definition it's of a prompt. So a 30 minute drive in, in, a, in an ice storm in January is different than a 30 minute drive in July. Right, and, and respond as soon as possible. Or as clarification, you, you're, maybe the language would clarify geographic, you know, radius, and location, and and a, a reasonable response time. time. Does respond to mean show up in person or does it mean call back? Right. Well, I mean, that's what you mean. Yes, it's open-ended, Tim. Yes, it's David. a good point. I think prompt in my case is fine because there's a lot of other enforcement that goes in play with this. If you say frozen water pipes and they don't have hot water, well, it's no longer rental and they have to leave. So the owner would be, I think, on uh, more than expeditious in finding his way there finding out that his guests can no longer stay in that building, whereas if they don't have the code to the door, and you know, I don't think they want their people to wait. If it's trash outside the door that they've gotten a complaint about, prompt is a little bit of time to clean it up. So I think the word prompt, in my view, is fine. Would little or no delay immediately? <laughs> yeah. the prompt mean? I mean, I don't think we need to we need the definition of the word prompt. <coughs> There's a lot of, a lot of other yeah, enforcement the issues depending on what it is yeah. that yeah. come into play. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's a good point. Well, why don't we um, monitor it as we go forward? Yeah, again, That's this is an example of what we said about, uh, yeah, Carrie, um, let's let this fly the way it is and see if it needs to be tightened based on ex actual experience. If we are finding there's non-prompt responses, then we can tighten. 
Okay. Any other comments under this discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. All those in favor of passing the ordinance in its second form as presented, say aye. 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 Uh, the, ordinance, uh, the ordinance passes. Woodstock makes a little history. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, so um, other business. Uh, we think we're down to the approval of minutes, actually. And uh, I'd like to entertain a motion regarding the minutes. And, and the, uh, unless there's something that needs to be checked. I wasn't present for that meeting, so I'm not going to comment on it. Accuracy. I move to approve the minutes as submitted. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And the minutes are approved. And so I will a motion to adjourn pending the review of expense so warrants. Moved. Second. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you and thank you all for being here. The meeting is adjourned.